वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द लास्ट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन टू प्रीवियस वीडियोस फॉर दिस सेशन एंड दिस इज द लास्ट वन इन दिस वन व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज फर्स्टली द इफ एल्स इफ लेडर लेडर सो इट्स लेडर मींस लाइक इफ यू हैव दिस इज हाउ अ लेडर लुक्स लाइक सो व्हाई डू यूज अ लेडर यू यूज अ लेडर टू रीच अ सर्टेन प्लेस so when you climb one step here then you check whether you can whether you have reached this stage if you have not reached uh, then you climb one more step on the ladder and then you try to reach out to something so this is the purpose uh, of using a ladder so that this style this approach is also required so everything depends on the situation everything depends on the problem that you are you should you should decide that which style of if you are going to use so this is also a situation if else if and that is called as ladder and the last one is nested if after that we will uh, do multiple branching using switch case so let us take the first one that is uh, if else if ladder this is usually when you have uh, when when you have to check uh, multiple range multiple range multiple range so what is this multiple range so uh, currently we are in uh, the month of uh, uh, march and april and usually in the month of march every employee is uh, going to file his uh, income tax returns and the income tax returns for a different person is evaluated calculated uh, in a different way so let's say uh, because the income of every individual is always different so let's say we have a situation where uh, a b and c are three employees three employees and a has an income of uh, say 1 lakh 80000 uh, b has an income of uh, 3 lakhs and c has an income of uh, 10 lakhs okay so these are the three different uh, situations and remember that since these three individuals have three different amount of income for a particular year the tax that is applicable to them will be different for each of them will be different so the government always has some uh, has some rule let's say the government has a rule that um, if you have income which is up to 2 lakhs you are not taxable that means you do not fall in the range where you have to pay income tax so that is one that means the first is no tax no tax for income up to for income up to 2 lakhs no tax you don't have to pay tax so this person will satisfy that particular uh, condition or range this person will have to pay so beyond that means the, he doesn't fall in that range up to 2 lakhs so 10% tax he has to pay if his income is up to up to 5 lakhs but 10% of what 10% of the amount which exceeds uh, 2 lakhs so how much so 10% of amount exceeding exceeding 2 lakhs exceeding 2 lakhs <clears throat> so up to 5 lakhs his uh, taxable uh, his tax percent will be 10% and for that person whose income is even more than 5 lakhs then his uh, uh, you know tax percent is say 20% so 20% of 20% of his income exceeding exceeding 5 lakhs exceeding 5 lakhs and this is up to say 10 lakhs so there can be multiple slabs more more you know ranges so this type of situation where you are checking the same value that is uh, your annual salary but the calculation for the tax is different so here uh, you can use i'm not saying you can you cannot uh, you have other options yes you definitely have other options but you can use the if else if ladder so let's see how that is implemented so i hope you got the situation here the criteria here 
So what we do is we check if annual salary is up to 2 lakhs then uh, tax is 0 we say else if there is a space here else if annual salary is less than or equal to 5 lakhs then the tax is 10% of the amount exceeding 2 lakhs. So whatever is this annual income which exceeds 2 lakh, that will be evaluated at 10% uh, at and that is the tax amount that he has to pay. Otherwise, otherwise, if his annual salary is up to 10 lakhs, then the tax is 20% of whatever is his annual income which exceeds 5 lakhs. So <clears throat> this is how it is evaluated. So this, what happens here, how this is evaluated needs to be understood. So let's say this is uh, the first, I'm labeling it first. When you start executing from top to bottom, as I told you that whatever is the construct, programming construct to use, the evaluation or the execution will happen from top to bottom. As it is going from top to bottom, as it is going, it will come across first which statement. Is your income, annual income, up to 2 lakhs? So you may satisfy, you may not satisfy. Let's say you satisfy. Let's say you satisfy. Please, please pay attention here. If you satisfy, if the person satisfies this if, then what happens, his tax is evaluated to zero after two, that means if this is true, this is true, after two it comes out of the entire block, that means it, is, it will not check any of these after that. So that is the plus point about using the ladder, that means you, you by putting your step on the first ladder, the first step on the ladder, you could reach out to something you are looking for, so you don't need to climb any further you don't need to check any other so you will not step into these two that is the that is the situation for uh, ladder in case this was not true one was not true then where do you go if it was not true so you come to three and you check whether this condition is going to uh, you know you are you have evaluated this to true so in case this is true what happens say in case this is true, you evaluate, you calculate the tax percentage and after that where do you go? You go out of this block, that means you are not going to check this one. That means once you climbed on the first step on the ladder, you did not meet the criteria. No problem. So you did not meet the criteria. You did not meet. So false. So when, then you have to climb one more step on the ladder. So you reach higher. So once you reach higher, then you check whether you satisfy this condition. If you satisfy this condition, then you calculate the tax. After calculating the tax, you don't need to climb any further. So you come out of this entire structure of the if else if ladder. If this also you do not satisfy, then what happens is false. You come to the last one, which is else if. And you check whether you qualify here. Sometimes <clears throat> it can be a situation where uh, none of these are evaluated. Then what you can do is you can have a situation which is called else. That means when none of these situations, conditions or ranges that are mentioned here are satisfied, then the tax is the last one that, for example, it is 30% of the amount which exceeds 10 lakh. So this is the example for uh, if else if ladder okay so I hope you understood this or you can pause and rewind and watch it again the next one is the nested if the nested if the situation is uh, uh, is nested nested if means nested if means one if one condition is there and inside that you have another condition. That means if you satisfy this, you have another condition to meet. 
you open one door and if you could open that door then there's one more door that you have to open okay so it's like that so what what is the situation what can uh, what can be a situation let's say you you go to the market your parent decides that okay uh, you are you're very good at programming you are becoming better in programming and then they have decided that okay they will give you they'll buy you a computer so you're very happy you go to the market and then uh, your parent asks you what do you want to buy then you have to decide because uh, a computer can be a laptop or it can be a desktop it can be a laptop or it can be a desktop so you have to choose which one you can buy both so <clears throat> if you decide that yes i'll buy a laptop then the question comes that how much your parent has allocated the budget that how much they are going to spend so then you you check whether you know uh, because various stores um, uh, where you will be visiting to buy they may have certain offers for you so if you are buying a laptop usually on laptop they have very less offers for on desktop because there are so many brands which makes laptop there are a lot of offers on uh, desktops so if you have uh, the budget is less than or equal to 25000 if that is the mm, sorry i'm i have to write the condition here if the of if you have a budget of less than or equal to 25000 then if it is true if this condition is true then there is no discount otherwise if it is more than 25000 the budget is more than 25000 you may get a 2.5% discount on whatever you are going to buy. For a desktop, as I told you, you may have more. So if you have a, a budget of less than 25,000, also you may get a uh, you may get a, a discount of 5%. And if it is more, that means you have more budget, say 30,000, then that means this condition will not satisfy. So you may get more budget means you may get more discount. So you look here, first is what are you buying? That's the first situation. So you want to buy a, so you can note this down. I'll quickly remove it. You can pause and note it. So you have decided to buy, you have decided to buy a laptop. So what do you want to buy? Input choice. So that choice has to be, is the choice laptop, so it may be true or it may be false. If it is true, then you have another condition to check. Is your budget less than equal to 25,000? That may be true or that may be false. If it is true, then no discount, discount equal to zero, so that means you straight away buy whatever is the price you pay and then you come to a stop and if there is more budget you have then whatever is the discount will be let's say 2.5 percent so into whatever is the uh, price and then you calculate you display you pay and then you join you go to end here you take a decision if it is desktop you're buying not laptop desktop sorry desktop you're buying then what is the budget is the budget less than equal to 25000 yes or no if it is yes then the discount is only 5% otherwise the discount is 10% and after that you display how much bill and then you come to stop so after that so look here <clears throat> this is the first if that you have to evaluate if this is true you have to evaluate another if so that situation is called as nested if so how do you write how do you write this so let's quickly see how you write it check if choice is equal to laptop if it is true 
if it is true otherwise if the choice is equal to equal to desktop it is false so you can write an else if or if you have just two laptop or desktop you, do, you may not this is optional this part whether you write or not is optional so if it is a laptop that you are buying then you check then whether the budget is less than or equal to 25,000 if it is then discount equal to zero else what else means is more your budget is more so discount is uh, 2.5 percent so the calculation you do so you see this if is evaluated only if you have satisfied the other if so this type of situation is called as nested if so <clears throat> we will jump now quickly to switch case Later on, we'll try to uh, we'll try to write programs uh, where we can deploy uh, these different styles of or techniques. Now, very important discussion on the switch multiple branching. So, what is multiple branching? What is multiple branching? What is multiple branching? Means switch case. Switch case. So you have many case. So you take a value, you take a variable or you take a value and then you check whether it matches the first case. If it doesn't match, then check whether it matches the second case. If not, it checks whether it matches the third case. So that is why it is called as multiple branching. But before we discuss that, first you have to understand uh, understand the difference between applying the if else or the switch case. So the points of difference between them is that if can number one check range of values. It can check range. That means you can specify a greater than 18 or greater than equal to 18. So here there is a range. That it can be 18, can be 19, 20, 21, 22. All those values will, will satisfy this condition whereas switch case does not cannot does not have a capacity to check range it can only check for equality so this is the difference or the purpose where you have to decide that which style of branching you will use whether you go for multiple branching or you go for bidirectional uh, it depends on the question number two uh, if can check any data type, any data type. So you can use uh, if to check any data type, whether it is int, float, okay, double, char, string, any. <clears throat> Here it can only check integer, character, and string. Apart from these three, it cannot check any because it will check for only equality. So it can only check for integers. It can't check for float because float is not perfect. Well, it's, it has got a decimal point, so that's why it will be confused. So it can only check for whole numbers, characters or strings. Lastly, there can be more, uh, we'll just uh, focus on the, uh, on the significant ones. The last point that we will discuss here is, regarding if, it does not require, does not require break. To terminate a you know if else there is a natural termination uh, but switch case or multiple branching requires requires break to terminate requires break to terminate <coughs> so let us quickly uh, check let us quickly check session is getting longer so you want to check for uh, you want to check for let's say different colors different colors uh, let's say the rainbow colors we call it as uh, vipure so you want to ask the user to punch in a letter 
which can be any one of these and then you will print the appropriate color name. So this stands for violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So you ask the user, so color is whatever you input. After that you take this, you write switch color. Remember that C color will input, C the color will input this in single quotation because a character is uh, always enclosed within single quotation. So you know already how to input a character. So after that, you write switch followed by the variable name. Then you write case, whether it is a V. Case, whether it's an I. Case, whether it's a B. And so on. So what do you write here? You write, if it is V, that means system dot out dot print violet. The color is violet. And immediately after that you write break. So that means in case the value of C satisfies this value V, then it will print violet and immediately will come out of the switch case. There will be no more checking uh, for the other cases. That is why it's very important to deploy a break. Let's say it doesn't satisfy V. It doesn't satisfy V. So you have an input I or you have input a B for the value of C. Then you check first, is it B? B? No, not B. Not B. B? No, not B. B? Yes, B. So what would it print? System.out.print Blue. And after that, there must be a break. There must be a break. So you may be thinking, you may be wondering, I didn't write anything for I. Indigo. Write it. System allowed to print an in indigo. Break. So write two statements here. Show it to me. And then in case none of the characters match, then you can keep something called a default. That means apne, you have input a value which is x. There is no color code which is X. So here you have to say in that case system.out.print print wrong choice. Wrong choice. Wrong choice. So this is the uh, this is the purpose why you may use a why you may use a switch case. Uh, the last uh, the last part of this video will cover uh, a situation which you can fall into is called as uh, that situation is called as fall through so fall through is a very important concept in switch case and sometimes you come across it when say for example you are inputting a month number month number to display how many days are there in a month so there are many months which have fixed number of days, fixed. For example, January has got 31 days. So which are the other months? March also has, May also has, July also has, August also has, October also has, December also has. So all these months have got 31 days. And the others like April, June, September, November November has got 30 days and specifically the February month may have may have 28 or 29 days. So if you are to display this, so it's not required to write a switch case uh, where you write 12 different case. It's not required. What you can do is you can club together these situations. You ask the user for the month number so he will enter either one or two or three or four one means january two means february and so on so after that what you do to use the concept of fall through you write switch switch month number and then you say all those months you club together club together like case one case three Case 5, case 7, case 8, case 10, case 
12. So all these, all these cases uh, mean, any one of these cases mean that the total number of days in that month is 31. So you, you display here system dot out dot print and then print and then uh, 31 days that means when you are going to execute it let's say you enter seven seven so seven means you entered here let will check whether it's seven no seven no seven no seven yes yes means it will try to find some statement on the right hand side of the column and try to execute it but it will not find anything so if it doesn't find anything what happens is start it starts going down this side and it will come across this statement which is 31 days so then you give the break so it will come out the other one is case uh, 4 then case 6 then case 9 and then case 11 so for that what you have 30 days and then you can check case 2 specifically for break. Case 2 will be 28 or 29 days. So that's about it. Uh, in the next session, we'll try to, uh, you know, um, uh, cover some important aspects of uh, programming approaches and techniques. Now, in the meantime, in the gap that we'll have, we'll try to solve as much as, uh, you know, problems as much as um, possible and then check so please write back to me uh, with the range of questions that i will provide to you now and then we will evaluate and see uh, how each one of you are doing thank you